You know, it's amazing. He was totally controlled by God. He only did what the Father asked him to do. But there's a... That, it's a little bit weird because even though he only did what the father told him to do, because he did what the father told him to do, it was freestyle. Because God's a God of creative power, God's a God of releasing power, God's a God who engages and, and sends us off in all kinds of different directions and, and, um, and ways because that's how God is. That's how God is. We discovered last week that Jesus' lifestyle was not boring, it wasn't stayed, he wasn't hemmed in any, in any way, he wasn't restricted at all in any way. His lifestyle was a, a freedom life, a freedom life. Uh, like I said, it was a little bit random, he's shooting off all over the place, doing lots of uh, healing people, mixing with the big wigs and the dignitaries. He's down in the gutter with uh, the blind and the lame. Uh, he's, he's round at people's houses having meals. He's here, there and everywhere in all different spheres and, and, and areas of community life, of, 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 of power structures. He's there everywhere, but it's freestyle. And one of the prominent themes we see in the lifestyle of Jesus Christ is the consistent theme of power anointing him enabling him, transporting him right through his childhood into manhood, to the cross, right, right into being resurrected from the dead, the power that raised him from the dead, where, where he, he came to a point where he was sat at the right hand of God in glory, in power. The Bible says when he comes again, he's going to come in power. In power, friends. He was so convinced. Oh, sorry, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul, yeah? And, 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 and uh, um, right throughout his public ministry, the Apostle Paul was always reflecting on Jesus' lifestyle. And what he came to realize in reflecting on that lifestyle is that if he wanted to live as Jesus lived, he needed to. Um, you copy that freestyle lifestyle, yeah? He, he realised that if he was to be effective in his public ministry, he had to copy that freestyle lifestyle. And you know, the Apostle Paul was so convinced of this thing of uh, copying the lifestyle of Jesus that he wrote it down in his first letter to the Corinthian church where he says, in chapter 11, verse 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ, yeah? Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. He saw this freestyle lifestyle and he thought, I want a bit of that. I'm going to follow that. And as I follow it, you follow it. He was so convinced that the lifestyle of Jesus was a way to revolutionise the, the generation in which he lived in. And it's as if he's saying, follow my freestyle lifestyle. Because I learned it from Jesus himself. That's what he's saying to the Corinthian church. When they're kind of looking for inspiration and looking for examples of how to, people to follow. He's saying, look at Jesus. Look at his freestyle lifestyle. Follow him. In Paul's writings, he gives many illustrations of what the freestyle lifestyle looks like. And uh, the best one, I believe, is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 to 28. It's an incredible passage. Like it's in a passage that speaks of much sacrifice, but it's completely freestyle. He talks about his life and you know what he'd been doing in his mission journeys and trying to reach people with the message of Jesus. And he says, I've worked much harder, I've been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, I've been exposed to death again and again. 24 times I received the, uh, from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Um, Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't 24 times, it was five times. I was reading the, uh, the verse there. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like 24 times, Dave. No, uh, I, must, I must miss out the verse thing, Joe. Right. <laughs> Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and, the, and a day in the open sea, and for blokes, that's like, come on, Paul. You know, because we all want to be a bit manly, don't we? Particularly me, because I'm not manly. You know, I think, oh, come on, Paul, he's rock hard. He spent three, three days in the open sea. It's great, it's freestyle. The tree style. I was shipwrecked to spend a night and a day in the open sea. I repeated that. Uh, it was worth repeating. 
I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false believers. I have laboured and toiled and have gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I've faced daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? Uh, and do, do not feel with who is led into sin and do not inwardly burn. Freestyle friends, freestyle lifestyle. Sometimes we condition ourselves to such a boring Christian existence. And I want to tell you when I came here, we came here, you know, obviously, you know, there are comforts for me and Katie in coming here, but I want to tell you it's freestyle what we've done. There are risks involved. I tell you, we've taken risks to come here. And I know in lots of your lives and in previous times in your walk with Jesus, you've taken incredible risks. And when we take the risks, it's the most exhilarating, most incredible thing in our lives because we know that we're following Jesus and it's freestyle. It's a lifestyle that's freestyle and it's like God could send us anywhere and make us, uh, ask us to do anything. We're so in love with him that we do it because we've agreed uh, with the Apostle Paul that this freestyle lifestyle that we saw in Jesus is one that we want to imitate. And I really believe that Paul is demonstrating here power. Power. We have access to power, friends. We have access to the very power of God. Paul's displaying here power to live a freestyle lifestyle. Power that comes from Jesus Christ. And it's that power I want to look at today. In the freestyle lifestyle that we've been called to live, I'm starting to annoy myself with this, <laughs> but I want to get it into our system again. Yeah? That's why I repeat it. In this freestyle lifestyle that we have been called to live, I want to look this morning at how we've been set free, as I've already said, to access power from God. And as a backdrop to that, I'm going to uh, talk this morning. Uh, as I talk this morning, I want to focus just on one verse, yeah? It's in Romans 8, verse 11, and it says this, and it's, honestly, I keep going back to this verse time and time again. It's a verse that's embedded in my spirit. I, I, I want to live this verse, and I don't live it, and because I don't live it, I get so frustrated because I want to live it, because it's the most incredible verse, and it's Romans 8 and 11, and it says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. What an incredible verse. Every time I read that, I'm just, whoa, that's incre that, is, that verse is incredible. If we could just harness that verse and understand that the, the implications of that verse, it would revolutionize our lives. We would live in the power. We would access the power of God that God wants us to access to live out a life that's completely free, but completely meeting all the needs of the people in the community around us, the people in the church. It would be revolutionary, friends. Revolutionary. The first thing we notice about this verse is that we're promised that if the same spirit that je raised Jesus from the dead is able to raise us up in power, uh, is, is, sorry, it's able to raise us up in power in any situation that we face. And that's a fact, friends. It's an incredible fact that needs to become more, more of a re reality in each of our lives. It's a fact. That the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is able to raise us up in power in any situation that we face. It's a fact. And we need to live in the fact. We have to grasp that fact. And with all our effort and might, we have to seek resurrection power from Jesus Christ as a constant companion. If we're going to change track, Sorry, I was going to say, and if we do, it means we'll change track and move in a completely different direction. <laughs> and constantly, and I walk with God and in, in the life of the church, we've got to be changing tracks. The reason the church gets so stuck in a rut and people don't come in is that they see it as so boring. We're not changing tracks. I want to tell you that church that changes tracks, people see. 
that it's changing tracks, it's, it's, it's entering in, into all areas of it, its community, it's Amen. meeting people's needs, because it's changing tracks, it's got the heartbeat of Christ, it's got the heartbeat of Christ for the single mother in the bed sick, who's stuck on her own and hasn't got enough money to feed her kids. It's changing track for the kid who's being beaten up by his dad. His dad's going to walk out any, any day. It's changing tracks for the couple who are going through marriage difficulties because they don't know how to relate. We live in a generation where it's completely we're devoid of an ability for people to relate. But I want to tell you that a church that changes tracks can bring hope in every situation. Amen. Amen. And I believe in a church that changes tracks. We need to change tracks, friends. We need to go in a direction that's freestyle, and then the lifestyle will come. When we harness the resurrection power of Jesus in our lives, incredible things happen. We know in our individual walk with Jesus that when we have harnessed the resurrection power of Jesus in our lives, when we said, Jesus, I need you to raise up this area of my life that is dead and that is without any strength or without any... Uh, hope. I want you to lift that up and I want you to bring it to life. Uh, if we ask God to do things in areas of our life that he, he, he lifts us up, doesn't he? We know it in our lives, in situations that have been dead where we've thought there's no hope there anymore. God's finished with that. And we've been so disappointed with God and then suddenly he sprouts of life and it's alive because he's a God of resurrection. He's a God of resurrection. We need to harness the power of Jesus. And we need to see, start seeing some incredible things happen. I want to see incredible things, friends. I'm not hyping it up. I believe in incredible things. I believe in the God of the incredible. You know, when I first started pastoring yoga four and a half years ago, one of the first things that I was asked to do was put on an event for the Easter holidays. And I, and I was thinking about what to do. And I said, Soul Survivor, and uh, uh, they have this thing called Slum Survivor, where what you do, you get a bunch of kids that... Um, that, that want to kind of raise money for people in orphans in, Af in, in slums in Africa, yeah, in, in Durban City, sorry, in, in, um, in South Africa. Yeah? You get a bunch of kids together, you get them to build huts. You get them to build a slum, basically, in, a, in an old car park somewhere. You get to live in it, raise some money um, for, the, for these slum kids in Durban City. And, uh, and God really impressed it upon my heart that I should do it. And, uh, I had this opportunity to do it, and um, do you know, it, it, logistically, it's quite a difficult thing to do because we had to get about 60 wooden pallets, you know, that you transport food on and things like that. We had to get them into our car park. We had to get uh, load. We had to buy loads of tools. We had to buy loads of um, kind of, uh, you know, kind of costumes for the kids to wear so they didn't get the clothes dirty. Then we had to get someone to, to organise all the catering. They're only allowed to eat rice for two or three days, you know, in these wooden huts. Then I had to organise like Bible studies and stuff like that. And I had to organise like evangelist, uh, evangelism stuff because a lot of the kids were coming into our youth drop in. They'd never come into church before. They'd never experienced anything of God before. And we pulled all this thing together and we had this slum survivor in our, in our town for a week. It was in the car park. All these kids living in these wooden slums. I've got photographs of it. I want to tell you that it was one of the most incredible things I've ever done for Jesus. It was incredible. Kids were genuinely saved and are walking with Jesus now because of that. Not many. There's one kid in the worship band who plays bass at Yeovil. There's another girl who's uh, doing an internship at Yeovil. All came through Slum Survivor. They came through our youth dropping. They've never, ever encountered God before from horrendous uh, back, you know, backgrounds, completely unchurched. I want to tell you, it was incredible. It was an incredible thing that happened. And, and people were finding Jesus with the influence in the town. We had these big banners up around the car park fence saying slum survivor. And everyone thought it was, uh, there was kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a gypsy settlement happening or something like that. And they're booping the horns as they're going past. We were on the radio. Uh, we, we got it out in the local press. We have the, 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 the press come down and interviews. It was one of the most incredible things that we've ever, ever done. No, I've ever done for Jesus, right? And to the end, I was absolutely, physically, completely exhausted. I was a lot thinner than, than I am now. <laughs> and uh, when I look back, I believe the same power that raised Jesus from the dead was at work in me. 
Yeah, and it's not to brag or anything like that. What I'm saying is we can harness resurrection power. We can make things happen for God. We can have influence in our town. We can reach people for Jesus. I was living the freestyle lifestyle. And I, you know, I, was, I was looking at how the message puts it. You know that verse that we just read in Romans. It's, a, it's great because it's a bit more kind of street. And as you can see, I've got my yellow trainers on today. So I was freestyle. I've picked my worst trainers up yeah, just to just to shock a few people. <laughs> freestyle style last that. There you go. Uh, and uh, uh, this is great in, in the message because it says, this is great. Just listen to the way it puts it. It says, if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus. Bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. <laughs> With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's. And I just thought, isn't that incredible? It's incredible, friends. That's for us. That's for the people of God, the church of Jesus Christ. And I want, to get, I want you to get it in your systems that it's for us. It's for the now. It's for the things that we're doing now. We can change our town. I keep saying it. I believe it with all my heart. I believe that Jesus wants to resurrect this church. I totally believe it. I totally believe it. And I know people previously have probably stood in this, uh, where I'm standing, and said the same things. I want to tell you that because it didn't happen then, doesn't mean that it can't happen today. Doesn't mean that it can't happen over the next few weeks. We've got a YWAM team coming from America, 18 evangelists coming to this town to tell this town how amazing Jesus is. Amen. And I want to tell you that over the next few weeks I'm going to plan, meticulously plan with all my heart to make uh, best use of this resource that God is. God's giving us this resource, friends. Amen. Some of us have been on the journey a long time. We're weak in our faith. We're discouraged. But I want to tell you that there's going to be life coming into this place. There's going to be life coming into this place. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. Another reference to this resurrection power that's on offer to us can be found in Philippians 3.10 where Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his re resurrection and participation in his sufferings. I want to tell you that there's resurrection power, but if we get resurrection power coming into this place, there's going to be di difficulties as well. Let's be real. But I want to say that the resurrection power and the thrill of following Jesus is far exceeds any kind of opposition or hurdle that we've got to overcome because he is amazing. He is amazing. He wanted to know it, this resurrection power, because he wanted, he wanted true freedom. This is a guy who'd been tied up in Judaic uh, religious, religiosity. He knew the, the Old Testament inside and out. He knew the Hebrew language. He studied with all his heart. He was chained to this religion that was just dead. It was a dead religion, friends, because it was taught by spiritually dead men. And God breathed on this man, Paul, and, and, and gave him a taste of freedom. I want to tell you, he wanted to know the freedom. The freedom that comes from following Jesus. And each one of us in here this morning... And the various things that we've done for Jesus, we've experienced freedom at times in our walk with God. I want to tell you, step back into the freedom. Freedom, freedom train or trail. Step back into the freedom trail and start living in freedom again. I want to say to you in here this morning that this freestyle lifestyle that we're talking about is not a one-off occurrence. God's desire is that we access his power to live the freestyle lifestyle Amen. every single day. Amen. Every single day. I want to tell you in here this morning that we are free to access a consistent flow of freestyle lifestyle resurrection power every day of our lives. We are promised in Romans 8.11 in the second part of the verse that we looked at earlier that Christ is living in us. He's living in us, friends. It says of the Spirit of Christ that He is living in you. And that, that ongoing flow of life-giving power is there to enable you to live a freestyle lifestyle. It's a consistency of power in our lives. 
a consistency of power. And it's funny because in our lives there are many molds that Satan wants to put around us to stop the flow of consistent power that God wants to release into our lives. One of the molds that Satan puts upon us is a mold of cyclical sin. Now in previous generations people would have understood cyclical sin as something called besetting sin. Yeah? And that sin that kind of appears now and again. Yeah? It appears and then it brings us down. And then it disappears for a while. And then when we start to go on with God, it appears again. Yeah? Cyclical sin. And for some people in here this morning, that sin might be criticism or a critical spirit within, within our hearts. For some people in here this morning, it might be gossip. We all like a bit of gossip, don't we? But I want to tell you that gossip can be a dangerous thing. For some people in here this morning, it might be anger. You know, when I was a kid, I used to get so angry. You know, uh, when I moved out when I was 16, you know, Dad had to replace about six or seven doors. You know, I'm not strong, lad, but I'd probably punch my fist through every door in the house. I was so angry, so full of rage. Because it was just like a real frustration. Real frustration, yeah, I didn't know God, you know, uh, you know, all my friends were kind of getting into stuff that I didn't want to get into. I'd see my sisters go down the drugs route and the clubbing route. Uh, I'm there, kind of isolated, no community around me, just frustrated. Thinking, what on earth is going on? And, and uh, obviously God broke into my life in an incredible way and I got saved. But, you know, I, I despair to think where I would be today. I was a complete idiot. Do you know what I mean? And most of us were, let's face it, complete idiots before we met Jesus. He came in and he changed our lives and he brought resurrection power to our lives. Completely transformed us. He forgave us for everything that we've ever done wrong. He forgave me for all those broken doors at home. He's a great God, isn't he? Yes. He's a freestyle God, freestyle in his forgiveness. I forgive that, I forgive that, I forgive that. Because I'm God and I love him. I love him despite being lousy and wrong. I love him. And I want, to see, I want to see him living right. I want to see him getting that area of the life sorted down. Clear out of that. Keep out of that. That's our God, friends. Oh, he's ace. He's incredible. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. My goodness, I stand before a holy God today, preaching his word. What a privilege. I don't, but he is he's brilliant. Our God, isn't he? Our Jesus is amazing. And I want to say, until we learn to live in a consistent flow of the power of God, we're going to get pulled down. And that's a difficult thing. It's something we have to learn. It's, it's almost like a wrestling match. You know, we're in, in the ring and we're wrestling with all that stuff we're dealing with. Yeah? And, and we kind of learn how to do it better each time. Now, what I, what I want to say there's a place of overcoming for the believer. Whether it's anger, whether it's feelings of rejection, whether it's insecurity, whether it's lust, whether it's gossip. Whatever it is, there, there is there is power to overcome, friends. There is power to overcome. When temptation comes, we need to step into the flow of the power of the living God and choose to take the diversions that God lays down for us. I want to say that God's a God who creates diversions. When there, there are things that are going to bring us down, God always provides a way out, doesn't he? There's a scripture, I can't remember now, but it, where, you know, it talks about God providing a way out. It's, about, it's a scripture about temptation. It says God will always provide, provide a way out. You know, I used to be in commercial sales. I was a motorway man for about eight years. And I covered the north of England, Scotland. They've told me this before. And uh, I used to see many accidents on the motorway, M6, M62. Many accidents. And then... Um, when you see a potential blockage ahead, you have to assess whether to carry on or take the diversion. And sometimes I would, I would carry on, and I'd think, oh, it's clear. And you'd be there for like five hours, stuck on the motorway, missing all your appointments. Not punching the wheel because you've been saved by Jesus and you've got grace in your life. I'm very frustrated, having to make those phone calls, saying, I can't get there. But, as I kind of uh, grew in, in my ability and skill in, in kind of managing road networks, I, I learned to take a diversion. 
Because although it was slower, and although it was the A road, and although there was a huge queue of traffic, inevitably you would get to your destination quicker than if you'd stuck in, in than if you were stuck in the blockage. And in our lives, we can be living in a flower of power, and we can be overtaken by the momentum of the things that are happening in our walk with Jesus. We can be lost in how great the thing is that we're doing for Jesus, yeah? And it becomes kind of about the, the thing that we're doing rather than about who we're doing it for. And wh when that happens, that's when Satan sees us in our vulnerability. That's when he cuts in. And we fail to see that event ahead of us that will allow us to bypass anger, to bypass criticism and lust and insecurity. We fail to see it because we're taking our eyes off Jesus. We forget that he is the power source for our lives. We get ensnared and the power flow to live the freestyle lifestyle is stopped. When we reflect on what's happened afterwards, we see that we've missed God's loving call. We've missed the diversion. But there's always a way out, friends. There always is a diversion. It's just learning to find where those diversions are and take them quickly. And then we live in the free, in the flow of freedom that God's got for us. And I want to live, I want to choose freedom. I want to choose the flow of freedom. The second mold we get into is the mold of religion. And that mold stops us from being free in our lifestyle. It resists change, it creates fear among people, it creates a kingdom of comfort where believers are lazy, where we don't want the new thing anymore that we wanted when we first found Jesus. And I want to tell you, when people look in from outside and they see religion, they're bored. They're not interested, they don't want to know. You don't want to know. It disables and it brings decay. And I want to tell you, friends, that any mould of religion in our lives needs to be taken and courageously smashed. You know, I, we've got a cross, right? We've got a cross, a great cross for the church. Someone gave us a cross. I was thinking the last couple of weeks, we need a cross for the church. And Roy came up to me the other day, one of our deacons, and he said, I've been given a cross day. I said, oh, let me have a look at it, Roy. So I went down to his lockup and had a look at this cross. It's just a wooden cross, yeah? Um, someone made it. I, I don't know what it's been made for. It's, it's, it's a great cross, you know, it's just the right size. Perfect. And uh, I had it up, up today, and it was there on the stage. And I thought, uh, I didn't have any screws for it to fasten the top section on, but uh, I thought to myself, I'm going to take it down quick. Because it's made of wood and it's brown. And I'm going to paint it orange. I thought I'll take it, I'll take it down quickly before people see it and, and they don't want change. Because I want it to match our paintings. The headers are wonderfully painted for us. Amen. And our banners at the front. I tell you what, Jesus will think our, our orange cross is wonderful. You think, what a splash of colour. It's wonderful. That's my yeah. So um, so so we're gonna have an orange cross, yeah? So I took it down quickly just in case uh, anyone said, oh, it's maybe the cross on which how sacrilegious. Because that's how we can be, isn't it? We can be a little bit religious. And I say that respectfully, because I know for some people change is a difficult thing. But I don't want to tell you that if we change and if we choose to do things differently, if we choose to be creative in the things that God wants to do in the church, he's going to do creative things. Amen. And I don't want to stay stuck in a mold. You know, God wants us, wants wants us to be free and God wants to give each one of you in here this morning lifestyle power yeah you know despite all these changes uh, that we go through from time to time in, in, in the church and things like that God hasn't changed God wants to give us his power to live fully for him in fact he is longing to release power into our lives it is his deepest desire that we step into the flow of resurrection power that he has for us today. We're told in the last part of this verse in Romans that God wants us to wants to give life to your mortal bodies. Amen. 
because of the spirit who lives in you. He wants to give us power. Because he knows the power he gives can change Holyhead. It can change the town, friends. Yeah. It changed Jerusalem. All those religious guys stuck in the temple, not allowing people in because they might move things about or upset things or make things untidy. Or be, for whatever reason, he changed Jerusalem. Through Paul, he changed Greece, he changed Rome. God changed our nation. Many times God has changed our nation. He's changing places today like India and Africa and China. And he wants to give you lifestyle, freestyle free lifestyle power so that you can change this town. Amen. And I want to say to you all in here this morning, receive your lifestyle power. How do you do that? Just make a decision to live totally for Jesus Christ. Amen. Live totally for him. Well, in the plans you make, the decisions you take, in times of success, in times of distress, follow him with your whole heart. Follow him with your whole heart. It's simple. It's simple, friends. Spend time with him. Speak with him. Learn about him. Take him to work. Bring him into your family lives. Remain in the flow, and you will live out a freestyle lifestyle and receive the power that God has for your lives. God bless you all. Let's just close in prayer.